James Charles and Toddy Westbrook have had a little bit of a dispute going on very publicly. And most recently, James Charles' mother even got involved and there's even more videos being made about that. And as somebody who sits here and kind of analyzes YouTube culture, I think there's definitely something that we need to talk about and what we learn about what this says about where humanity is at today. What is up everybody? This is Chris from The Rewired Soul where we talk about the problem but focus on the solution. And if you're new to my channel, sometimes what I like to do is take a look at the YouTube community and try to turn this mess into a message. So if you're into that stuff, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell. So I want you to sit back and imagine this. Let's say you have a friend and both you and your friend go and apply for a job. You both get this job. You two have been friends for a while now you're both working in the same place, all right? Or maybe you had a friend who was working at a place and then they got you the job. Well, you two are working together, everything's all honky-dory, and your friend does something that kind of upsets you. Now, imagine this. Imagine your friend doing something to upset you and in front of the entire office, in front of the entire office, you just voice how upset they made you, all right? Like, think about that for a second. So if you're not caught up to speed about what's going on with Tati Westbrook and James Charles, that's kind of like what happened, okay? So here's a little rundown of the story. James Charles was at Coachella and there was some um, gummy vitamin place that like provided him with some additional security. He ended up promoting them on his Instagram story. And then Tati Westbrook made a very sad, kind of hurt um, Instagram story being upset about this, all right? And since then, James Charles made a apology. He just kind of wrote a note on an Instagram story and that was kind of like the end of it. But then James Charles' mom got involved. Um, apparently she was like liking um, tweets or, or comments defending James Charles. So like, I do want to talk about how this is just like, it's just fascinating to me and I'm gonna talk about myself in a minute because don't worry, all of you out there who've been following me for a while, like, don't worry. I'm gonna give myself the business as well. But like, just like, isn't it weird where we're at as a society today? Like, I've tried to like step back a little and just kind of really look at what everybody's doing, look at what I've been doing. But like, these two are or were friends. They have each other's phone numbers. They have each other's phone numbers and then this just got put into the public spotlight. Like, we're in a place where this is just happening and it's not even, like, I was talking to somebody else about this and they're like, yeah, you know, like public relationships and pub public breakups. That to me makes a little bit more sense because everybody's kind of along for that ride and then when they break up, like, people wanna know. But this situation between Toddy Westbrook and James Charles could have been handled 1,000% off camera, all right? but. Think about it too, like just a few months ago and some people, you know, still believe it might've been some fake beef, but KSI and Deji, those two are freaking brothers. They're brothers, all right? And all this stuff just happened publicly. And it was mainly Deji, KSI kind of tried his best to just like squash it and whatever, but like Deji just kept, kept making videos and kept making videos. In my opinion, like I, the, the, this video is kind of like about response videos and these public like, videos and like looking back at my own history I'm like I'm somewhat embarrassed about the way I've acted in the past with some of my response videos and it's something that I'm, I'm like trying to not do in the future because there is going to be more criticisms of me and things like that in the future it's inevitable you know what I mean but I'm gonna try to handle it off camera or just not even engage in it you know what I mean because the, the way I see it the way I see it when I see these YouTube response videos it is, it is like this ultimate kind of like confirmation that you're justified in your feelings. Like when you get into an argument with your friends, like let's say you have a friend group and you get into an argument with your friends uh, or, or another person in your friend group, you're going to try to justify your feelings through that group of friends, right? They did this to me, here's how I feel, this is what they did, right? And you want them to agree with you. Meanwhile, the other friend is gonna do the same thing with the friend group, right? But in YouTube culture on such a massive scale, it's so much different because it seems like this ultimate craving and need for like validation, trying to get 
tens of thousands of people, if not millions, like in Tati Westbrook and James Charles' case, millions of people to be on your side. You are just like, hey, validate the way I'm feeling. Help me feel justified in believing that that person is wrong and my feelings are valid, right? Like this is something that we all do, right? But what we're seeing in YouTube is like, it on such a massive and public scale, which is very fascinating to me. But here's the thing too, like during like my own um, time off and just kind of something that I've just been finding myself in, is a lot of you don't realize this, or maybe you do, but there are a lot of little like niche communities on YouTube where they are just constantly making these like back and forth response videos. And it's just like having like your audience versus their audience. There's people who like this channel more than this channel. So they'll have this person's back and not that person's back. And I'm sitting there, I'm like, what is happening? Like I, I followed this one story of like probably like five or six really small YouTubers just all making videos about one another and then thanking their audiences for having their back and other people were getting upset and everything. I'm like, I'm like, where, whatever happened to just communicating with one another? You know what I mean? So like I said, when I look back at like my own behaviors, I'm like, what am I doing? And, and I think the part that bugs me about my own actions and just seeing this from like people like Toddy Westbrook and James Charles um, and just a lot of other YouTubers is the, the influence we have on smaller creators, the influence we have on the audience. Like when I was watching these smaller niche communities make all these response videos, I'm like, holy crap. Am I to blame for this? Are other YouTubers to blame for this? Because a lot of people model behaviors, right? If you're a child, you end up growing up and modeling the behavior of your parents or your older siblings, right? So when you have these smaller creators on YouTube, they're looking at bigger creators like, okay, if I wanna succeed, I need to follow in that path. So I see it as bigger creators and I'm by no means a big creator in my mind, but like just me being a bigger creator than other creators, like I have a responsibility to be an example, right? And that's why I look at things that I've done, I'm like, whoa, right? And something that I'm gonna just gonna keep saying, but like, Wisdom is taking your knowledge and putting it into action, right? Like all of us can have knowledge. All of us can have common sense. Like I shouldn't, you know, do this. I shouldn't do that. But do you do it? Do you not do it, right? So I want you to think about that. And I would love to hear from you guys as the audience as well. Like how do you feel when you get involved in it? Because something that I noticed even with um, some of the other videos that I had in the past was like, I was, I was contributing to like splitting audiences because most people, I'd say 99.9% .9 of people are subscribed to more, one, more than one YouTuber, right? So what happens when two of your f uh, favorite creators are against each other, now you feel like you gotta pick sides. And some of it, when I see it, like even with Toddy Westbrook and James Charles, when I see it, it almost um, seems to me like you know, a kid whose parents are getting divorced and their parents are at each other's throats. Like, which side do you choose? Why do there need to be sides? Like, what I respect about um, I'm Alex and Jackmate is they squashed their beef very quickly. Like, they shared a lot of the same subscribers and very quickly they got together, they did a podcast together and they talked it out and they squashed it, which I wish would kind of happen more often or just settle things off camera. Like, if you get back to the uh, uh, the origin of what happened between I'm Alex and Jack made, like, Jack, you know, when he saw that and he was hurt by Alex or didn't agree with what Alex was doing, should have just messaged him, right? But you see people making these entire videos on it. And here's the thing, and here's what's screwed up about this cycle is, and I would love to hear your thoughts down below. Like, at what point do you need to defend yourself though, right? Like at what point? Because somebody somebody is always the instigator. There's usually always an instigator. There's the person who fires the first shot, right? So the question is, at what point does the other person need to publicly address it and defend themselves? If there's false information, or like in James Charles' case, he tried to, 
you know, explain, you know, he tried to apologize and explain, but like he was put in a position where he had to do so. So in my mind, and as I'm trying to grow as a creator and change the way I do things, like I'm trying to like figure this stuff out and you know, maybe you can give me your input in the comments below. Like at what point does a person need to defend themselves? I saw this happen just a couple weeks ago. Um, one of my uh, favorite creators, they were attacked by somebody else who had almost like a million subscribers. And I was like, huh, you know, should this smaller creator defend themselves? You know what I mean? It's just, it's really, really interesting to me. But again, like more so, I just want you guys to like kind of think of where we're at as a society in 2019 with social media, especially with YouTube culture and like call out videos and response videos and everything like that. Like if you, if you put this into your real life in like these real life scenarios, would this be socially acceptable? Is it more socially acceptable now? Like the analogy I gave like about being in a workplace, like, you know what I mean? Like when I put it in those kind of terms in my mind, I'm just like, it just doesn't really make sense. You know, so anyways, I would love to know your thoughts on this topic down in the comments below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you're new, make sure you subscribe and ring that notification bell because I make a ton of videos. And a huge, huge thank you to everybody supporting the channel over on Patreon. You are all amazing. And if you would like to get involved in our monthly Q&A, get some other perks and benefits and help support the channel, you can click or tap on that Patreon icon right there. All right. Thanks again so, so much for watching. I'll see you next time.